Welcome to round one of the 2024 United States Women's Disc Golf Championships presented by Mint Disc. I'm Alan Jansen and today I'm joined by Mint Disc teammate Alex Stewart. Hello, excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, we're currently watching Kevin Wolliver uh, prep for his announcements. He's getting all of your sponsor information. How are you feeling here? We're, we're right at the top looking down hole one at Sprinkle Valley. Nervous, definitely nervous. I'm always nervous, like the first couple holes of pretty much any tournament. So right now, I can already tell that I'm being extremely awkward. <laughs> Just trying to like get to know everybody on the card. And I think this is our my first time I've ever met Ashley as well. So it was cool to be carded with another teammate. But yeah, I'm definitely nervous. Try not to think about the drive. Sweet, and you're you're slowly getting your your sponsors out there. I know you told him a few, and then you hesitated, and now he's moving on to Ellie here. So so why don't you just go ahead and I guess give us your sponsors so that way the viewers know. Yeah, so I have of course Mint Discs, I have Birdie Watches, Nashville Disc Golf Store, and then Ink Me Disc Dies. And so I made sure that he was saying Mint and Ink Me because they were both there with me supporting. Um, and I, I, you know, I'm very happy that they made the trip down there with us as well. So definitely wanted to give them that shout out. Oh, yeah. And you've got the caddy with you. Yes, my husband, Brian. Yep. <laughs> and we got, we got to play around with the Ink Me guys out at Moody's Ranch. Uh, earlier in the week before this round so you got you got loose down in austin mm -hmm. and you were coming from the tennessee area yes yes it was very nice to uh get to play moody ranch i'd met the moody's a couple of times actually the first time in north carolina at last worlds and mm -hmm. she invited us over for breakfast and so she made us some breakfast tacos and we tore up the course and had a great time I, of course, didn't see your ace that happened, but I was there for it. <laughs> I'm never going to live that down. That's okay. Everybody else saw it, so <laughs> so it happened. There were other witnesses. <laughs> so here we are. Here we are on the first, first tee here. We saw Ashley's shot and then Christie's shot. Now it's your turn, uh, staring down the triple mando. I really try not to even think about the triple mando. I just tell myself to throw it straight. <laughs> I'm so nervous, and I'm just telling myself to hold on to the disc until it matters. <laughs> I held on to this one a little long. I'm just, I was happy I made the mandos. Yeah, this this shot's actually really tough. You, you, you have a landing area that's about 300 to 315 down the fairway, just kind of slightly sloping to the left and downhill. And I saw a lot of people this weekend throwing slightly too understable of a disc. Um, and flipping out into the right side, hitting that right side cedar, dropping early, and then having tough scramble shots up to the uh, up to the green. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I back when I was here in January, I was throwing my crave up, and it worked great for me. But I've been working on my form since then, and so the crave clearly did not work for me on day one or day two. <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, stabled up to my eternal longhorn, and it ended up being a lot better for me on this hole yeah i mean it's it's tough to like nerves that first shot mm -hmm. to like really execute exactly how you want to and and i mean as you can see as anyone can see here there's a lot of trees down here to hit yes it's a it's a tough of tough up and down once you get off the fairway to the right or the left we had had some some real struggles on this first hole I mean, personally, I like to go more stable and just kind of fall into the woods in the left and, and know I have a little bit bigger angle out to the basket. But, yeah. you know, even then, it's not guaranteed. I was very proud of that upshot. <laughs> yeah, I usually when I'm pinched off like that and I need to do that backhand turnover shot, I have a I have a paradox in my bag that only comes out for those shots if I really just need that backwards hook and it it's a very good reliable hook for me yeah it found the perfect hole in those trees to give it you that did. putt right there 
it has a nickname around here. We call it because it look it's the watermelon disc. So around here we call it juicy. <laughs> <laughs> and wait, so. what's what's the deal with that purple putter? You want to talk about so, that? So, uh, embarrassingly enough, I brain farted that morning and forgot my putters. So. Mason Ford's dad stepped up and you actually also helped. You guys pulled a UFO and a bullet for me. And man, those putters did some work today. <laughs> <laughs> I was shocked. I remember I saw that purple and I was like, I may not be giving this back. I really like this thing. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of hard to walk into a round and have a completely different oh, set man. of putters in your hand. I know. And luckily, the ones that I got were just like enough because the I know the UFO he gave me was just beat in enough that it was flying just like my Alan Jansen one that I throw so and I learned that you'll see later but I mean boom yeah got the, <laughs> the slow mo there for me yeah oh yeah this is my diamond back that I'm throwing if I remember correctly I think I turned it over a little bit nope this time yeah good looking shot right there yes yes the day day two is when i turned it over just a bit but yeah to this day christy i remember complimenting her forehand quite a few times during this round she has quite a powerful throw yeah i really like that one angle forehand there just kind of getting it to the corner and then letting it just fall to the right on its own yes you ended up in a good in a good spot too but you know, for anyone not standing on this tee pad, that tree on the left there is feels very close, and throwing a backhand off this tee feels scary. Yeah, it comes up quick. Yeah, so it, you really kind of tend to overturn the disc or throw too much hyzer on it when throwing a backhand. So the forehand's a great play here, but you know, like yeah, all the fairways that sprinkle, there's a lot of trees. Yes, and you really don't want to be in the rough here. she landed. I think she got a good little kick right on the edge here. I know that some of these spots, if you're in the rough, there's just no no getting out whatsoever. There's just tree after tree and little twigs everywhere and thorns and poison ivy and they were not kidding about the rough here. <laughs> yeah, the fairways look big on the video and, and, and they feel big when you're there in person, but like one little kick one way or the other um, or off of one of these trees because uh, Mike Olson, the designer, you know, left these trees specifically for us to uh, be punished by, I think. Oh, that's me. That's the one I remember over overturning yet. That was my goat, and I put a little bit too much on it. Yeah, I got it over off the fairway to the left. And if you're if you're late on the left side, like deeper... You can still get out to the basket easily, but kind of where, where you went, and I think where Ellie went, it's it gets thicker looking towards the basket, so you kind of have to be kind of creative to get out of there. Yeah, I remember I didn't have much of a window. Yeah, Ellie maybe had a little bit better window there. Yes, I think I like threw a little roller, yep. yep. <laughs> I didn't have much here. <laughs> Yeah, I remember that was my first test putt with the UFO, and I was, like, a little worried. I was like, is it a little too beat in? Is it not beat in enough? I'm going to give it a go, and I realized that I didn't put enough on it. And I was that's when I was like, okay, I can put some on this thing, and it should fly like the one I have back at my Airbnb that I plan on bringing tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely remembered the rest of the weekend. Yes. Yes. I am sad that I, uh, I think uh, the only thing I left behind was my chalk bag, but it's okay. I bought one while I was there. All right, so we got a different angle here on hole three. This played as the easiest hole on the course. This was a fun one. Yeah, just about 300 feet, but that gap again, it's yeah. very tight. You really want to push that tree line and then let it skip towards the basket. I saw a few ace runs. I know uh, one girl that I was carded with on day four said that she, I think she said she hit chains or splashed out for an ace. Oh, 
And man, I, there were a lot of close calls this week. I was a little surprised we didn't see one on, on one of these shorter holes. I agree. We had some close ones, though. Yeah, I know Stephanie Vincent had one that was right right past the chains. Mm-hmm. Uh, giving this a run. Yep. That's me testing my UFO again. <laughs> Give it the height. Man, Christy was all over that basket. Um, yes. And it just seemed like it took her a while to get in the chains, but... Yes. She had a very cool spin putt, the way she released. Yeah, just little tap-ins. I think the next hole is the fun little... A good birdie there by Ellie. Right. Oh yes, that was a great, great throw for her. She had some, some great shots out here. I enjoyed being... I enjoyed all their card, actually, and I know... We talked to uh, Albert a little bit, who's practicing his golf swing back there. <laughs> <laughs> he was very nice as well. Oh, yeah, nice. I want to pick your brain on hole four. What's your game plan here? So I really want something that's going to float, but not too far, because you don't want to really hit those trees over on the right that it kind of you can see everyone's kind of curving towards. So I'm using my flippy jackalope just to try to coast up there a little bit so it'll still fight enough to land in the middle. And it worked out almost every day. I think one day I yanked it just a little bit, but for the most part, I really just wanted to try to crank up and just throw something just a little understable so I could stay in the middle as much as possible. Because once again, even though this hole's a little more open, you still don't want to be in the rough. Yeah, are you thinking uh, using that first shot as a layup then, and then approaching the basket second shot? Yes, yes. I really just want to, because there's a ditch kind of that goes to, in the Everybody little past the, the middle that I'm in on this hole. standing in. Yeah. Yes, and I really just want to get as close to that or past that as possible so I can have a good little upshot to the basket. I don't want to do anything crazy, just, you know, maybe give it a little bid for the bird like me and Ellie did, but still give me a, yeah, a good chance for walking away with the par. Yeah, I think this hole actually played tougher and tougher through the weekend. I think more and more people felt the need to try to birdie it and mm -hmm. ended up off in the woods on the left or the right with not much of a way to get to the basket. Yeah, and I definitely didn't want to get too aggressive because when I did that in practice, I usually ended up costing more strokes than necessary. So I just really wanted to play it safe in this one and just stay in the middle as much as possible. <laughs> a little kick back there for Brian. Yeah, I don't know what Brian was doing there. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to will that tap in into the basket or something. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. Another little angle. Oh, this one was fun. This one was really fun. This is the only day that I took this angle on hole five. I felt like maybe I was standing right where some people wanted to throw to, and maybe I <laughs> was causing some of these bad shots. I um, aimed right at you, so it worked for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good shot. Push up yeah. the fairway on the left side, stop before the OB. Yeah, this was, uh, this was probably my best day on this hole, which was really unfortunate because... I really, no, 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 I lied. Day four, I did really well as well, but I really enjoyed this hole. This was probably a favorite of mine. How about this shot right here? What do you, what do you think when Christy went for it from there? Man, she's got that arm and yeah. I knew like when, as soon as I saw her thinking about it, I, I was like, yeah, oh yeah, she's going for it. She's got some distance. Yeah. So you said this was a what a favorite of yours? Yes, I because I love that starting tee, you know, shot off the tee because it really challenges you to pick a line and dedicate, you know, yourself to that line, and then you really have to. I just I love holes that make you think and make you tell yourself, okay, I want to land here so I can go here, and I felt that day one I executed this hole pretty well. There are a lot of holes on this course that are two-shot holes, specific landing areas, things like that. Yes. 
This one was a lot of fun for me. There were quite a few holes that really made you think that when they bit, they bit, but I really enjoyed, <laughs> really enjoyed playing them and letting them test me. Yeah, good putt there by Ellie. Very good putt. It always helps to have a, a fun card, and I felt like we had a really fun card that first day. Oh, I remember that putt. Uh. I remember that putt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that one hurt. Because I that putt felt good, but it was just a little, a little too much on the right side. That one hurt my soul a little bit. But I'm still in no way upset about how I played this hole. <laughs> yeah, it looked good. <laughs> the walk of shame. Oh, no, I skipped. Oh. <laughs> Just keeping myself positive. A happy skip out of there. <laughs> yes. It's always good to try to keep a good attitude when you're playing, because once that little bit of doubt hits your brain, it's really hard to get rid of it. So, and skipping is, you know, it's hard to skip when you're in a bad mood. <laughs> It's a good way to look at it. <laughs> and we also had, you can't see it here, you'll see it later in the video, but but we had a little bit of rain too, so it was kind of a little mm -hmm. bit moist out there. So we were like on and off of the umbrellas all day too. You can see the camera kind of trying to adjust to the, the overcast skies too. Mm -hmm. I also really enjoyed this hole. <laughs> Little slip there by Ashley, but she still gets it Hello. right up to the basket. She oh, kind of yes. needed that. She was having a rough start to the round. Yes. I remember I get a little tree love here. A little tap to the basket. <laughs> you need it out there, for sure. Yes. Yes, this was a really fun... It's a very, very birdieable hole. You just have to hit that, that line. Good up shot. Ooh. Spin pie. I love it. Lots of little tap ins. Yes, everyone's just right into the basket. Really cool hole. I think one of the things that Mike Ols does really well is. He has a lot of holes that, that do shape well to a, a one angle forehand or a backhand, but then he also has those holes, kind of like hole four um, and just there on hole six where, where you can throw a nice turnover line that's like a late flipping line or you know something stable and get it really over and have success. Yes. That's a wild line you took right there. Um, that was such that. an accident. <laughs> I was aiming in that direction. I actually meant to aim pretty much where everyone else is aiming, but I mean, I got very, very lucky on that release. I really wanted to try the line that Ashley just threw up with a forehand, but there's that one little tiny tree that you can see right there in that middle, and I hit that tree so many times that I finally was like, okay, backhand is where it's at. <laughs> So I, re I really, you really just, yeah, you just want to ride that outer line and try to get up in the middle of the fairways so you can get up and be in good placement to get in the next stretch of the fairway. Well, I think you just went with like the fastest way between two points is a straight line. So yes. you know, I like that you picked that tight gap in the inside. That was me checking my alpha to get a good little skip left up the fairway a little bit. Good kick. Great kick out there by Ashley. Yes. Yes. These trees in the middle were, were just knocking everything down. <laughs> just denial after denial. Well, There's I another some, one. Yeah, I saw some brutal, brutal kicks on this hole going up the stretch to the basket. Mine included. <laughs> yeah. I love that shot by Christy. I'm a big fan of the big... Shot. Anheuser forehand like that. Yes, that was a beautiful shot. Ashley still can't catch a break to uh, start the day. Yeah, I remember the... She told me the trees were being mean to her there for a minute. 
it seemed like every hole there was a tree kick that, you know, you just looked like it was so good and then just found a late tree or or one of those little small ones in the middle. Yeah. Good little upshot. Hmm. Oh, so close. You know, I played my first round with Ashley uh, about a couple weeks before U.S. Women's. Mm -hmm. And she nailed just about every putt she had. She's I was a great player. I was excited to watch this, and I think she was just just slightly off on her timing. Maybe he's just a little bit nervous out there. Yeah, she she did say that she was a little bit nervous. So you know, we chatted a little bit, and you can you'll see it through the round that she warms up a little bit. We chatted a little bit, got to know each other, talked about home and what tournaments she plays locally, and. Anything to try to help another teammate, you know, get out of their head a little bit. <laughs> it's never fun being in your head. And this course just kind of keeps kicking you while you're down sometimes. Yes. Now, I, once again, I love this hole. It's a very birdieable hole. But this hole can really punish you. <laughs> it's such a tight hallway here very tight hallway and it wasn't until day four that I was finally able to pump the shot that I was trying to get the whole week down there and I like finally made it to circle's edge I was so proud of myself right <laughs> did you get the birdie in the last day no I I think I chained out on the putt wow but I was close wow. I was very close to no wait no I did get the birdie didn't I never mind I hit the putt I'm thinking of a different one Yes, I did birdie this hole on day four. <laughs> Great up shot. Here's a real question, though. On day four, did the Dutch Bros tent have coffee? Uh, yes, they did. Okay, was that the reason why you got the birdie? Because we were missing it on day one. No, I don't think I got coffee. I think I got. I don't think Some I got lemonade. Anything. Maybe I got lemonade. I don't remember what I got. I think I might have gotten their lemonade. Yeah. I, it was just cool having them out on the course like that. Hmm. Great putt by Ellie. I absolutely loved all of the vendors and all the stops that we had uh, in between holes. I've been to, I mean, I've been to Music City Open a couple years, uh, volunteering and helping out, and I went to the Worlds last year. And while we did have water stops and caddy or not caddies, uh, spotters who had snacks, I don't believe I've ever seen anything like that and I I loved it having like the pickles and the little oranges that they were handing out and apples bananas snacks pickle shots coffee I mean you name it I mean stickers I love stickers I have so many stickers now um, I and I, I saw quite a few of the FPO players saying that it it felt awesome to have all those little extras on the course to have so <laughs> so each station was run by a different Austin club. So each club kind of was responsible for their own station. They brought snacks. I know. I think the pickle the pickle tent was the uh, Waterloo tent. But yeah, each each station was run by a different club, and it was very diverse in, in terms of what you could get for each at each booth, and and they were all over the course. They were greatly appreciated, <laughs> and all the spotters. All the volunteers. It was a. We were. I was just blown away by all everything that was going on here. So definitely an awesome experience. And I'm definitely going to be back in November. Oh, <laughs> I yeah. missed this course already. <laughs> it tore me up, but I miss it. This was a fun hole. That little stretch up hole nine. Before yeah, you this is over. way more uphill than you can tell on the on yes. the video here. Yeah, that second shot, I mean, your tee shot is important, but I would say the second shot, in, in my opinion, on this hole was a little bit more important because, I mean, you get one bad kick up that stretch and it can be a real struggle getting up there. Yeah. I learned that on day two. <laughs> yeah, pretty specific landing area, just past that one big cedar off the tee, and then you're just trying to find a good gap to get up to the basket. Yes. And make a putt. Yes. 
you, you don't get much ground play honestly on this hole. It's it's uh, there's a lot of this sort of erosion control with the big cedar logs on the ground, mm -hmm. and if you catch one of those on the way up, I mean you're just gonna stop betting your tracks. Yes. Yeah, and all of the cedar and wood chips they don't allow for a lot. Of, I had some really weird where I would think I would get a skip, but it would hit just Everything one little, little piece wrong and stop, or just like go straight up and not go anywhere and. So you can't always 100% rely on getting a good skip out here because you, until the ground gets worn in a little bit more, you really never know <laughs> yeah, what's going to happen once that disc hits the ground. Yeah, and there we are. That's the front nine. A lot of scrambling going on, a few big putts, a few bad breaks from the trees, but um, overall the cart's doing all right. You guys are all in a good mood here. Going into the back, we get to basically head back to hole one. To, to throw off a whole 10 there with the crowd again so I'm excited to see it I'm look forward to seeing you all on the back nine yes and we'll see you there <laughs>